Welcome back to another Day Our Survival One Life Challenge. This is Cambo Commando. Welcome back, guys. So, uh, as you know, we are now in Dula. We are now in Dula. A lot of you guys been suggesting me to either build my base or go to Dula or have my base around Riyazan. So, uh, you know what? I haven't decided yet. We'll get there and we'll find out which one is the better one. All right, so now let's get right into our perks. We have three available perks. So let's do it. You guys suggested that I should get armor quantity. Armadillo dose two. All right, let's get that done. So we got two more. I'm gonna pick one and then you guys can decide the last one. All right, let's see here. Veteran looter, marathon, explosive expert, or monster hunter. I do like searching speed. Oh man. You know what, let's do, let's do veteran looter three. All right. Now, which one do you guys suggest I should get? Lumberjack and need for speed. Saving on armor cause durability hunter or rifle expert comment below and uh the most votes gets chosen all right guys so uh so well i um decided to go to Tula, right temporarily and uh have my base built in this area this little camp right here and uh you know what we gotta go and continue our searching for truth right we gotta go there guys so let's do that and investigate do that all right all right and all right let's find out let's search are we supposed to search <laughs> Or we're supposed to go in here, but you know what? Let's let's just search. Might as well, since I'm already in this area. All right. Apparently, we need to go back into the survivor base of Thula. All right, now final person, Nadeshda. Ah, that's the lady searching for truth. It was cold and dark in the tiny house. On an old mattress, leaning against the wall, sat a small, gray-haired woman. She was Nadashda Gulik. Another mattress lay against the opposite wall, but there was no one else there. I approached Nadashda. Nadashda, don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. The old, well, prematurely aged, to be precise, woman didn't startle. She looked at me distrustfully with her tired gray eyes and doesn't speak. Sorry for the intrusion. I really need your help. Can you spare me a couple of minutes? Then I'll leave and not bother you again. Who, who are you? What do you want from me? I wanted to ask you something. It's about your husband. Nadasha twitched at the mention of her husband. Then she frowned and turned away from me. L leave me alone. Nadasha, hear me out. It's important. The woman's lip quivered. She looked at me in fury. Important? Couldn't you pick a better time? Get out! Retreat toward the door and wait. Nadashda sat completely still for several minutes. Then she stood with difficulty and poured herself some water from a jug. That's when I noticed that there were two mugs on the table. The second mug had a picture of a cartoon line on it. A youth magazine peeked out from underneath the pillow on the second mattress. I recall the hostile look of the camp residents. Could they be involved with Nadasha's missing roommate? After drinking some water and calming down slightly, Nadasha turned to me. You, you haven't left yet? What are you looking at me for? Uh, leave me alone. I just want to help you. 
If if you want to help me, then leave now. Someone close to you is missing. Who? This woman's husband with the only thread that could lead me to the truth about events long ago. I had to convince her to talk. Gina. Son. What happened to him? Nadashda let out a sob and brought a handkerchief to her nose. A tense silence fell once more. Finally, Nadashda looked at me again. He went out with one of his friends, Vania, to Novo Moskovs two days ago to get food. But Vania came back alone. He said the building collapsed, that Gina died. I didn't ask for much. I just want to bury my son to look at his face one last time, you know? I asked our people to transport his body back, but they refused. Why risk lives over one dead body? It wasn't worth it, they said. I went and asked, but there was no hope. You have my sympathy. Leave me, please. Wait, wait, no! That's a wrong one! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's the wrong one. Okay. Okay, let's help the fire son, alright? <laughs> you again? What do you want from me? I can find your son's body and bring it to you. Nadeshna looks at me skeptically. You... You really do it? Take me to Gina? Yes, I'll bring it. Nadeshda was probably struggling to believe that a stranger was willing to help her when the other camp's dweller had refused all aid, but she got a grip on herself and then spoke in a whisper. Well, then come back as soon as you can and be careful. All right, we got to go and uh, help her son, Gina. I have to bring a boy's body back to his mother. A very sad mission. It's surprising the way life plays out sometimes. You survive an epidemic, nuclear war, five years of starvation and deprivation, and then your life implodes because of some stupid accident. Well, that happened to me. I need to find this Vanilla who went with Gina and find out in which building the collapse happened. All right. Let's go in here. Let's talk to this troublemaker. All right, let's do it. Searching for truth. Vanilla was sitting on the porch and smoking. Within his first few words, I realized they was slightly drunk. Hey, we haven't had anybody new around here in a long time. Where do you come from? What hole did you crawl out of? I'm a drifter. Vanilla even whistled. A drifter? I didn't think there were any idiots left who would walk around the wasteland alone. Well, there are. I want to ask you something. About Gina, right? I saw you visit his mom, but I'm not telling you anything. I've had to tell the story to everyone at least three times. I'm sick of it. Well, you have to do it one more time. Vanilla laughed and tossed his cigarette into the bushes. Then he gave me a mocking look. Nasty kid. <laughs> what do you wish to know, my lord? Just tell me what building you left him in. A five-story apartment building next to some garages in an apartment on the third floor. What's in it to you? I want to bring Gina's body back to give him a decent burial. Vinilla chuckled again. <laughs> so what? You're seriously going all the way to Novo Moskovsk for a corpse? The young man went quiet and then gave me an intriguing look. Listen, Drifter, I've got an idea. Let's go to my place. I brought some liquor back from Novo Moskovsk. The label says Bryanskia. Have you heard of that, Brad? Only trouble is, I got nobody to drink it with. There are only women here. Thanks. Some other time? Or, you know, I don't really feel like drinking with you. How about... How about thanks, but some other time? What? And you call yourself a Russian? Alright, let's see. Now I know where to look for Gina's body. 
I better hurry before the rats or other scavengers get to it. And the idea of showing a mother or son mutilated corpse? Nah, I'll pass on that particular pleasure. When I get there, I'll have to take the body out of the rubble. I should bring a crowbar and a shovel. All right, we gotta go there. Do I have a crowbar and a shovel? Yes, I do. Let's do it, boys. Let's go and retrieve the body. All right, all right, all right. We are in Novomoskovsk. I hope that's pronounced correctly. Oh man, I don't have a gun. I don't have a... Do I need that? Required pistols. All right, let's go back and get our pistol. All right, boys, we got our pistol. We don't have the motorcycle yet. Maybe we can still do it. Required car or motorcycle. Ah, you know what? We got to make that motorcycle for. We got to do it, but let's see if there's a motorcycle area that I can uh, get to. No, that's just car. What about here? A sharp, unpleasant noise came from somewhere above our heads. I looked up and saw a bent tin strip sticking out under the roof edge. The guts of wind had bent it, but it straightened out and began to rattle shrilly. The sound reminded me of something. Ooh, we got another memory, boys. What is it? It's probably like our wife. Let's see here. It is dark beyond the window, and the snow is howling past. But there's one other sound, a sharp screeching noise that feels like it's piercing my skull. One of the neighbors is blaring out some kind of metal garbage. Goliath comes slowly into the kitchen. She looks much older than in my last memory. She looks like she's been crying. She stands and stares at me in silence. I turn away and fish out another cigarette. What do you want? I ask her quietly. Sasha is sleeping in the next room. I want to talk to you. Kalaya replies, just as quietly. You've already said everything there is to say. You were very eloquent. What else is there to add? Kalaya rushes to the table and takes my hand between her palms. Darling, forgive me. Forgive me for all the horrible things I've said. I was wrong. I'm no good, but... I promise I won't be like this anymore. When you didn't come home again last night, I just went crazy. I know how hard things are for you, how hard you have to work. I know you are unhappy. You wanted other things. Tell me what to do, how to help you. I love you. I'll do anything for you. Just tell me what you need. I look into her eyes. I see the pain and compassion there, but what does she see in mine? Fear? and despair. I'm going to look for them, Goliath and Sasha. And if they're all, I'll find them. I need to remember something else, even just the name of a town. Ooh, more memories and more question. All right. Our first goal is to find a motorcycle part, right? There's no motorcycle area in this part of town. All right, boys, we found a place where it has the motorcycle, right? So now we need to search for it. We need to break it down. And I brought some uh, some parts to make our motorcycle. So let's do that. Let's make it so that we can get that mission for the lady. So let's do that. Let's assemble. There we go. We got it, and we got, it. and we made sure to bring extra gasoline. All right, let's use that. Now let's go and get this done. All right, boys, let's do the quest. I made my way through the dusty entrance and up the stairs. On the third floor landing, I encountered a pile of concrete rubble that almost reached the ceiling. A lone piece of steel piping was sticking out of the pile and the corridor beyond was blocked by a cracked flooring slab from a floor higher up. A large hole gaped in ceiling above me. 
I shone my flashlight up and could make out the cracked ceiling of what must have been the fifth floor. Similar cracks snaked along the plaster on the third floor. Let's keep going. The rubble was more imposing than I expected. It was going to take me several hours to clear a path using a crowbar or a shovel, and that was being optimistic. I surveyed the cracked walls distrustfully. The load-bearing wall behind the rubble was missing. I'll have to work very carefully if I don't want the building caving in on my head. Alright, let's clear the way. Over three hours passed before I managed to get past the barrier. The muscle in my arms were aching with fatigue. I'm in a hallway with broken concrete pile up half a meter high. There are three apartments here. One of the doors is open. Maybe Gina was here. Maybe he still is. Alright, let's search the apartment. I found Gina's body in the kitchen. Poor kid. Chunks from the walls and ceiling were piled on his torso. I listened and heard a low whistling sound. He was breathing. The kid was still alive. I needed to get him out of the rubble and look him over as soon as possible. I sat the flashlight down and started lifting the rubbles off his body. But not even a minute had passed when a muffled rustling came from the corridor and a lynx scurried into the kitchen. The noise must have drawn its attention when I was clearing the blockade in the stairwell. The lynx had definitely been exposed to radiation. It was unnaturally large, and it had green swellings on the bald spots of its body. Let's take our gun and shoot the lynx. The lynx looked at me appraisingly. Then it turned toward Gina and dropped closer to the ground. I'm holding a gun and the Link doesn't even see me as a threat. This isn't the first time I've seen this. Predators exposed to radiation seem to have lost all fear. They're like rabid dogs. Their instincts for self-preservation has been suppressed. Let's attack the Lynx. Alright, so this should be a very easy, very simple one. It's in our turn. Make him come toward us. There we go. Now it's my turn. Um, he's gonna attack me too. Shoot that. Oh, it does no retaliation. Let's keep poking him. There we go. Let's end our turn. Use the bird to claw him. There we go. Easy. When the lynx was dead, I dragged the heavy carcass into a corner and got back to work. Gina was mumbling something and weakly pushing away at the air with his hand. I shoved the largest piece aside and saw a sledgehammer. Strange. I got Gina out and gently carried him into the room and laid him on a small couch. Look the kid over. His left leg was only badly bruised, but his right shin bone was definitely broken. Gina wouldn't be walking for the next few months. He was a good looking kid. He had an intelligent face, freckles, and he was really young. No more than 16. I fashioned a splint for his leg. Gina's eyes opened slightly. Thirsty? Give the sick kid water and food. Gina perked up a little after drinking some water. He even tried to eat something. Lie down and don't move, I told him. You're awfully energetic for somebody who's been trapped under rubble for a day. Your right leg tells a different story though, and you've probably swallowed some radioactive dust. That sucks. Gina sighed. Will I be able to walk? Right now? No way. Besides, you have to. Who will look after your mother if not you? She sent you? She didn't send me. She asked me. Are you going to bring me to her? Don't you want to rest a little first? No, I'm sick of lying around. Bring Gina to the doula camp. How are you feeling? I asked when we were out of, out of the city. Gina didn't answer me. He was lost in his own thoughts. Unpleasant one. Judging by his grimace, I sigh. <sighs> you should be thrilled to be alive and thanking your lucky stars. You had every chance of dying back there. Is that idiot already back at camp? Who are you talking about? Mania? He came back. 
Why are you calling him a jerk? Because this is all his fault. His fault? Can I share a little more details? Gina grimaced. All right. In that apartment, we found a crate full of booze. Mania said we should celebrate. What was I supposed to do? My mom doesn't let me drink. You refused? Gina looked at me like I was crazy. Of course not. And she won't find out. So we drank. We hung out. Then we started looking at other apartments in the building. They were all locked. Then Mania remembered that the kitchen wall in the first apartment was all cracked. He said we could make a hole and crawl through into the apartment next door. He took a sledgehammer from the storeroom and started hitting the wall. Oh, okay. You couldn't come up with anything better than that? Gina continued. The wall held, but the ceiling started crumbling. I yelled at Vanilla to stop, but he just kept hitting the wall over and over like a psycho. I tried to take the sledgehammer, but he punched me and he kept battering the wall. Gina squirmed. So the ceiling caved in. I was on the floor in agony. I couldn't see anything. Couldn't breathe through the dust. When I recovered a little, I noticed that Vanilla was gone along with our backpacks, and then there was a crashing noise on the stairs. The whole building was shaking. I thought I was done for. So that's what happened. What do you have to say to that? Hmm, let's see here. All right, let's choose number one, the way I see it. You're both at fault. You shouldn't drink during an expedition. If you've been sober, breaking through the wall wouldn't have seemed like such a bright idea. What? What the hell are you saying? Gina clenched his fist. You're, you're defending him? You don't get it. This jerk left me to die. He didn't even check on me. And it was his idea in the first place to break through the wall. I told him it would end badly. Find no endorsement from me. Gina turned away and was silent. We had entered a patch of fog. It became harder to make our way across the rough terrain. So the conversation was dropped. When Gina saw the light of the camp in the distance, he suddenly asked to stop. What is it? I asked nonplus. I thought you wanted to go home. Home? Will still be waiting for me after I've done this. Do me a favor. Turn off into the grove and go along the path. There will be a meadow after about a hundred meters. What are you planning? I'll tell you when we get there. Come on. You don't mind, do you? Intrigue. I didn't argue. Five minutes later. We emerged in a small meadow covered with fine, dry grass. There was a pile of embers at the edge of the meadow, next to a fallen pine. We're here. Now, tell me straight. What are we doing here? Help me out. Get out? Feel like going for a stroll all of a sudden? I've got a better idea. I'll take you to your mother, and after that you can walk around all you want. No, you don't understand. When they see me in the camp, it will be too late. I frown. What will be too late? Gina thought it for a while and then gruffly asked me. Can I borrow your gun? I scoff. A gun? <laughs> what do you need a gun for? You can either tell me what you have planned or I'm taking you to Nadeshda right now and you can work out the rest on your own. You have to help me. I don't owe you anything. That's it. I'm done. We're going back to the camp. Gina grabbed my arm. Fine, fine, I'll tell you. The thing is, there's somebody I want to talk to right here without any witnesses. And with who? With Vanilla. Vanilla's not here. Vanilla's at the camp. This is where I need you to help me. You have to go back to the camp and bring Vanilla here. Tell him whatever you need to. And when he's here, we'll talk without witnesses. All right, so this is how we get the special flashlight and the lighter. So as I remember, we gotta pick number two and help out Gina. All right, let's say I'm willing to help. Great, Gina said eagerly. I'll tell you everything you need to do. You leave me here with the gun. What do you need the gun for? For protection. There are wolves in these woods. The irradiated ones are like rabid monsters. And just in case Vanilla goes psycho on me. I didn't like his tone. Gina continued. Go to the camp. Tell Vanilla that you saw some elk 
ask him to go hunting with you? He loves hunting, so he'll definitely say yes. Bring him here, and we'll talk things out and settle things for good. All right, let's do number one. Fine, you win. I'll see what I can do, but uh, I don't like this at all. Hey, you already promised to help me. You gave me your word, so keep it. Gina thought for a moment and then pointed at a fallen tree. I'm going to wait for him there. Help the kid get to the fallen pine. Gina sat down, grabbed onto a protruding branch and tried to get comfortable. Oh, that hurts. What were you expecting? One leg is just a big contusion and the other has a broken bone. You could stay here even if you had no legs at all. When I was sure that Gina wasn't going anywhere, I walked back. Wait, the gun. All right, we gotta load the gun and offer it to him. When Gina anxiously took the gun from my hands, I got a bad feeling in the pits of my stomach. I shouldn't let this happen. I shouldn't. The kid examined the gun with a kind of sick glee. Now this is what I call a gun. But I don't understand. I don't understand why this is necessary. Don't worry, it's just in case, Gina said, quickly tucking the gun into his belt. He was obviously worried that I would change my mind. Don't shoot yourself accidentally, whatever you do. Don't worry, when he showed me how to shoot, he even gave me a few lessons, so get him here. He frowned, seeing my hesitation. Hey, you promise. Go get Vanilla in the camp. Oh, there we go. That was the picture I was expecting. <laughs>